ஆழ்வார் எம்பெருமானார் ஜியர் திருவடிகளே சரணம் ஜியர் திருவடிகளே சரணம் வாட் இஸ் தி ப்ரொசீஜர் ஃபார் அக்செப்டிங் சன்னியாச ஆசிரமம் இன் அவர் சம்பிரதாயம் ஹூ அப்பாயிண்ட்ஸ் தி ஜிஎஸ் சுவாமிஸ் இன் அவர் மட் இட்ஸ் தி ப்ரொசீஜர் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் டு அவர் சம்பிரதாயம் ஆர் ஈச் மட் ஹேஸ் அ பர்டிகுலர் சம்பிரதாயம் தட் இஸ் இட்ஸ் தி ப்ரொசீஜர் தி சேம் ஜென்ரல் ஃபார் whole of our sampradayam or is it different for each of our mats can a non brahmin born swami be kshiyar that's another question is this position be given to anyone interested or only to his successor and what happens when some acharya don't suggest one as a successor so to start with what is the procedure for accepting sanyas ashramam in our sampradayam we will see how it was done traditionally and now how it is done traditionally those who would want to accept sanyas ashramam they would go to an existing mat and um, they would get trained under the existing sanyasi acharya this will be quite a long process because one has to first study basics of our sampradayam one should be engaged in some kankaryam for several years one should have heard granta kalakshepams of most important granthams of our sampradayam such as rahasya trayagrantham bhagavadishya kalakshepam vedanta kalakshepam and so on so after several years of study and after performing several years of kankaryam and either the existing gs swami sanyasi showing some inclination towards this person who has done those studies and gone through those training to make him as the next sanyasi or the person who is who has undergone all these studies and who is inclined towards becoming sanyasi either one one of them will initiate the process and uh, reveal their interest and intention to the other person and by subsequent observation um the interest of the individual their commitment all of these will be observed and finally the gs swami who is present in that mat he will be the ultimate authority to decide on the granting of sanyasa ashram for the prospective candidate there are other persons who may who may be in advisory role for the gs swami to verify to analyze the qualities of the person who is a candidate for becoming sanyasi so in general the current gs swami will be the ideal and ultimate authority to appoint the next one in the line next gs swami but there will be others who will give suggestions and advice scholars may be involved in that uh, experienced persons in that particular mat about the tradition about the practice of the mat of the temple associated with the mat and so on those will those persons will also be guiding the existing gs swami in appointing the next uh, person as sanyasi now this procedure is uh, somewhat uh, common throughout our sampradayam there may be some mats were advisory committee or advisory person their role may be little bit larger in some cases but in most cases or in general in all cases the existing sanyasi will be the ultimate authority the question about can a non brahmin brahmana uh, become a gs we can see in our sampradayam all sanyasis um that is all the sanyasis 
born in Brahmana. That is the tradition which has been upheld by Upachakya. So it appears that in our Sadaim there is no scope for Abhramana Swami's Bhagavata to become a Jiyar. From the Shishta Sadaim, that is the tradition established by our Sura Charyas, it doesn't seem to be a possibility. Another question is, is this question to be given to anyone interested or only to his success? I mean, it is to be given by the existing GR to those whom he thinks will be apt for that position to carry forward the concurrence done by the mud in a very scholarly, in a very gentle, in a very able manner. So it is up to the existing Acharya GR for me to um, make that choice. There is no automatic successor here. It is only decided by G.S. Swami and um, accepted by probably a committee or group of elders in that month. There is also the question what happens when the existing G.S. Swami doesn't suggest anyone as a successor. It, happen, it has happened in some cases where the G.S. Swami might have ascended to Paramapadam without having an opportunity to appoint the next GS. It may be a rare case. In the olden days, usually this would not happen very frequently because they ensured that the successor is chosen properly. But even in the past, in some unexpected emergency situations this happened. In such case, a group of elders who are associated directly with the will look at the situation, uh, analyze if the GS Swami previously had mentioned any names, or recommended anyone previously, or had anyone in his mind. Such things have happened before. A GS Swami might have told that this person would be the next GS, but before officially appointing that person uh, successor. This current year for me may leave this world. So, in such cases, based on his previous announcements or casual discussions, whatever he, whoever he has had in his mind, that person might be appointed. But in this particular situation, when the GS Swami doesn't appoint a successor, it will be the decision of the committee or the elders associated with the mutt. And whether it is a majority decision, in this case, that is, in the case of um, a committee or a group of elders choosing the GR, it, it will likely be a majority decision because they would get everyone's views and finally make up their mind based on the majority's decision. The final question is, uh, are the Sanyasi is allowed to see relatives after accepting the renounced order, this uh, Sanyas Ashramam. Um, it is said that uh, one should not see one's wife after becoming a Sanyasi. That is, one's wife in the Puru Ashramam, in the previous Ashramam. Whoever was the Sanyasi's wife in the previous Ashramam, Puru Ashramam, both of them should not meet each other. It is said that uh, definitely not meet with wife for accepting Sanyas Ashram. And it is actually, I have heard that if gets to meet one's wife face to face, then one should uh, do boo protection of, go around the earth once. So that is how strict it is. Um, and personally, my own grandfather's elder brother, my elder grand grandfather, he became sannyasi, and uh, my grandmother, that is his Purvashrama wife, she stayed away from wherever he would be at any point of completely. 
she was in a particular town she would not go to that town at all so that is how uh, she remained during her life and uh, dear from is my acharya's place he was my acharya also incidentally he is my acharya so um, that is how the uh, elders had maintained their sanyas ashram because it might give some emotional attachment on seeing the purvashrama wife so it should be completely avoided but apart from the wife all other relatives are allowed to uh, see sanyas ashram uh, one who has taken sanyas ashram the gf whether it is son or parents or anyone else anyone can meet but the important aspect is whenever they meet dear swami the bodily relationship should not be observed and thought about it should only be in the capacity of the dear swami being the head of the math and this person being shishyas or abhimanis so even if let's say a person's son becomes sanyasi that person should not see that sanyasi as a son anymore because he has now renounced everything while doing while accepting sanyas ashram the person will generally say i have renounced everything everything uh, bodily in this world whatever relationship one may have with anyone all of those relationships are severed completely so both the sanyasi as well as the person the relative who is visiting they should not have any bodily relationship thought should only be in the context of a devotee visiting the math whoever it may be whether it is father or son or brother or anyone so that is the general rule so these are some of the aspects about sanyasa ashram um there is probably lot more to be understood but for now i think this is sufficient for the questions which were asked alwar inderumanar gr tirudigale sharanam gr tirudigale sharanam to learn such valuable information about our sri vaishnava sampradaya please download koil k o y i l app from google play store or apple app store our website is koil.org k o y i l .org